this episode of Wasi Labs, I'm going to show you how to set up and install a tile wastegate. So just a quick note before we get started, if you missed my last video, I had originally ordered some cheap Chinese eBay knockoff wastegates and, uh, and they sucked. Bad. They leaked, they didn't fit right, the whole thing was a mess. But lesson learned, don't cheap out on wastegates. However, I did pick up some real tiles, so here's how to set those up. This can be a fairly tricky process, especially if you're running high spring pressures for high boost applications. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out which springs we're going to be running. If your tile MVS wastegate is from 2012 or later, it will come with a black, white, red, blue, yellow, and green spring. Tile has a chart on their website that indicates the proper springs to use depending on how much boost that you wanna run. Now, you can also use a manual or electronic boost controller to raise and adjust these numbers to your liking. I'm not going to be using an additional boost controller though, so I'm going to rely on the wastegates alone to control my boost. Although, having a manual boost controller does allow you to install a lighter spring combination and then crank the boost up to your liking with the manual boost controller, which is nice. I prefer not running the extra vacuum lines though, so I'm going to go without it. I want to run about 25 PSI or so, so uh, according to the chart, I need the black, blue, and yellow springs. Again, I can always increase the amount of boost that I'm running with a manual boost controller later on. Now that we have our springs picked out, we need to pop the top off of the wastegate. It's held in place by a bunch of hex bolts. Take those out and then we can add in the springs. You'll see here the wastegate has little channels that seat the springs in perfectly. We add in the smallest spring first, then the medium spring, then the large spring last. Anyway, once you have your springs lined up, next comes the really tricky part, getting this thing closed back up. If you're using a lighter spring, you may be able to push it closed by hand. However, if you're running a high boost application like I am, you're going to need a vise or clamp of some sort. I don't have a large bench vise, so I'm going to use a trigger style hand clamp because uh, that's what I have. Oh, and don't forget about safety. The biggest things that we need to look out for here is to make sure that all of the bolt holes are lined up properly and that we make sure that the diaphragm doesn't get pinched or distorted in any way when we seal everything down. Take it slow and make sure that everything is stable and lined up. Once we get the cover mated to the wastegate, then we'll start putting the bolts back in. Get them all started and threaded properly, then start screwing them in equally and little bits at a time in a star pattern. You want the cover closing down with as even pressure as possible. Once those are all snugged down, then we can remove the clamp. I have two wastegates, so I double this process for double the fun. Next, we start plugging up some of the holes. These wastegates have the option of being water-cooled. Again, the eBay knockoffs that I got did not have the water cooling option. Boo. I'm not gonna be using that feature at this time, so we're just gonna store the water line connectors for now. The wastegates don't come with plugs for the water lines, so I assume that if you're not water cooling your wastegate, then you can just leave these holes open. That's what I did. However, if I find out in the future that this information needs updating, then I'll make sure to post that in the description of this video. But for now, we just leave those open. There are three lower ports for air. We need to plug two of them and then add in an air bolt for the third. They come with aluminum crush washers, so make sure that those are installed as well. The two top ports will remain open unless you're using an electronic boost controller. Oh, and uh, I plugged one of the top ports while I was shooting this video, but I removed it after uh, I consulted the online diagram. All right, all set there. Now we need to make sure that the valve seat is installed at the bottom of the wastegate and then we can clamp it down with our V-band clamp. Oh, and just a quick note here, I couldn't figure out what size the bolt was that Tile provided for the V-band clamp. None of the standard or metric Allen wrenches that I had would fit. Four millimeters was too small and five millimeters was too big. So I'm guessing it was a 4.5 millimeter bolt or, uh, or a standard size that I just didn't have. However, the bolts that came with the Chinese knockoffs were just regular five millimeter bolts. So I just used those here instead. It was a better option than stripping out the bolts that Tile sent. If anyone knows what the correct size of the Tile hex bolts are, let me know in the comments. Anyway, seating the wastegate flush to get the clamp around it requires the same amount of pressure as the spring combination that you're running. So basically, if you've got a really high pressure spring, it's gonna take a lot of pressure to get it to seat flush. 
So we have to apply pressure to get the spring to compress a little bit to be able to get the clamp around it. With a lighter spring, you can probably do this alone. With a heavier spring, you're likely gonna need two people. One to push and hold the wastegate flush, and then another person to install the clamp. After that's done, all we need to do is run a vacuum line from the boost source to the wastegate. If you're running two of them like I am, hashtag twinscold, then I just need to tee them together. There we go, all finished up. Hop back in the car and let's go for a rip.